Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Martz, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today I'm talking about springtime mania, why it happens and what you can do about it. As we move from winter to spring and into summer, we get longer days and more exposure to sunlight. And as such, you may notice that your mood is ramping up. But it's actually not how much light you're exposed to, it's the rapid change in light that makes the biggest difference in triggering mania or hypomania. But here's where the longer days can impact you negatively. Longer days means more evening activities, and these can be activities that may not end until nine o'clock at night. And then it takes you longer to settle down in the evenings. And before you know it, you're staying up later and later and getting less sleep. And less sleep feeds mania. Let's review how the seasons work when it comes to the length of the daylight, and I'm explaining what happens in the Northern Hemisphere. In December, we have the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year and the longest night. Typically, that falls around December 21st or 22nd. Then, as we go through the winter into January and February, the days lengthen and the nights get shorter. When we get to March, we hit the spring equinox when there's an equal amount of daylight and night. And this is usually around March 20th. From there, the days get longer and longer until you reach the summer solstice in June when you have the longest day of the year and the shortest period of nighttime. Then the nights stretch out and become longer until you reach the fall equinox in September. Then you have an equal amount of day and night again. Then the days get shorter until you reach the winter solstice in December and the cycle starts all over again. These differences in day and night are greatest as you get further away from the equator. So winter solstice in parts of Alaska means 24 hours of night. For example, Barrow, Alaska in the Arctic Circle experiences 67 days of darkness from November to January and 80 days of straight daylight in June and July. So that's the backdrop of this. So what's this got to do with mania? People with bipolar disorder can be very sensitive to changes in your circadian rhythm or your body clock. And some people are more sensitive than others. The light is a very powerful trigger that affects your circadian rhythm. And your circadian rhythm not only controls when you sleep, but it also affects when you feel hungry and when your energy rises and falls. So if your body clock gets thrown off, you can feel hungry at odd hours and you can have energy at a time when you shouldn't be energetic, such as in the middle of the night. That rate of change in sunlight varies by area of the country. In the United States, sunlight increases most rapidly in the Sun Belt, Northwest, and Northern Midwest. So if you live in these areas, you should really pay close attention to changes in mood and activity level in March and April. What can you do about this? The first is to recognize signs that you may be coming manic. Typical signs are things like having irregular sleep, pressured speech, and lots of activity. Pressured speech is more than just speaking fast. To the person listening, it may sound like the person is speaking with run-on sentences. You can't find a way to interrupt their train of thought because the words just keep on coming. You may have trouble understanding what they're saying because they may be jumping from thought to thought and you just get lost. You may find that you lose track of the point that they were making. You may also feel like you're being assaulted with words because it's too loud or forceful. You can feel like, I'm just right here. And that's what you see on the outside with pressured speech. But to the person who has this speech, you may feel like you've got all these thoughts in your head that you just have to get out and it can almost feel like you can't speak fast enough to keep up with what's going on in your head. And if someone does try to interrupt you, it can make you feel anxious or agitated because there's a sense of urgency to say this stuff in its entirety and you can't stop until you get it out. Also be aware that mania or hypomania that's triggered in the spring may not always be happy mania. It may bring in mixed symptoms that make you look and feel agitated. The classic phrase is wired but tired. So the springtime can bring on more anxiety and destabilization from where you were in the winter. So that's intervention one, recognizing your symptoms. The second thing that you can do is establish a routine that you maintain year round, but you really keep it tight and controlled around this time, probably starting around February. We call this social rhythm therapy. 
people with bipolar disorder tend to respond very well to maintaining a very consistent routine. With social rhythm therapy, there are multiple things that you do during the day that could be part of the routine that you keep. But some researchers have shown that there are four activities in particular that matter more than the others. And these activities are the time that you get out of bed, the time that you have your first contact with someone, the time that you start to do your work or your chores, and the time that you eat dinner. So the goal would be to keep the times for all of these points in the day around the same. So that's intervention number two, keeping a strict routine from about February through May if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. The last thing that you can do is bring out the blue light blocking glasses. I talked about this in a video that I did on dark therapy. Just as sunlight can trigger mania, darkness can treat it. And full on dark therapy to treat mania involves wearing the glasses to block the blue light from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. But when you're not in mania, a preventative measure or maintenance routine would be wearing them one to two hours before your bedtime. And this means setting a regular bedtime, which you should do anyway, because keeping your sleep regular also helps prevent the onset of mania. So that's intervention number three. Wear your blue light blocking glasses one to two hours before bedtime. For more information on dark therapy, watch this video. It's also something people without bipolar disorder can do to regulate sleep. See you next time.